So welcome back to another video and in this one we are going to look at a very important technique that is used in recombinant DNA technology which is in vitro packaging of recombinant DNA using lambda phage. Now what is the need for this in vitro packaging? First of all when there is this E. coli cell, a bacterial cell and you want to transfect this cell using a recombinant lambda DNA, only the naked DNA, let's say this is having our gene of interest, if you want to transfect this cell, then this process is not efficient. That is, the desired results are not met all of the time. Now, instead, what you can do, you can take up the whole lambda particle, that is the whole lambda virus, bacteriophage virus, and you can package that, package the DNA, the recombinant DNA containing the gene of interest, and if you can transfect this or infect the bacterial cell with this, this is very efficient. That is, it is efficient uh, in comparison to only giving, uh, only transfecting the bacterial cell with the DNA. So to do that, what we need to do, we need to take the recombinant DNA or take the recombinant, recombinant lambda particle and we can package it along with the head and tail structure in a test tube. So packaging with head and tail structures in a test tube. And since we're doing this uh, in vitro, that is why the whole process is called in vitro packaging. Now, how do we accomplish the process. So the process, it requires two different strains of lambda. And we need to infect bacterial cells. I mean, separately, we need to infect these two different, these two different uh, lambda strains. Now, these two strains are different from one another. What we need to do, the first strain the first strain would have a mutation, would have a mutation in the protein E. Now this protein E is required in the formation of proper head structures. So if the protein E is mutated, then there would be no head formation. In the second strain, we need to do a mutation in the protein D of lambda phage. Now this protein D is actually required in the packaging of the DNA inside the head of the lambda phage. So when the mutation is there in protein D, there would be no packaging. So now one set of bacteria is infected with lambda phages of this mutation and one set of bacteria is infected with lambda phages of this mutation. So what will happen? The lambda phage would infect, they would give in their DNA and the proteins would be formed but since there are mutations in protein E and protein D, the whole particle or the whole lambda phage particle won't be present because of these mutations. Next what we can do, next what we can do, we can lyse the bacterial cells, we can lyse the bacterial cells and take out the proteins. So the lysets after lysing the bacterial cell, we can take those out. So Let's write it here, the cells lysed, the bacterial cells are lysed. We are taking out the lysets 
and we can mix them up with the recombinant with the recombinant lambda DNA that is having our gene of interest in a test tube. Now after we mix these two, that is the proteins from both the bacterial uh, cells, that is the proteins uh, in, the, in the lysid that are having no heads and no packaging. Now these would complement each other in vitro and once they complement each other, they would form complete lambda structures. Now, these complete lambda structures was, would also contain the recombinant DNA. That is, the gene of our interest. Now, after the complete lambda structures are formed, we can again infect, we can again infect these complete lambda particles into new set of E. coli. And these uh, lambda particles would give in their DNA and that would express and will get our protein of interest. So this was all about how we can perform in vitro packaging by using two different sets of uh, lambda molecules or lambda DNA and then we can in vitro package the whole particle and infect other bacterial cells so that we can get the desired protein.